afternoon, everybody. Uh, hello again, and thanks for coming around. I know we are backing into a break, so over the next 10 minutes or so, um, I'm going to clean these things up and answer any questions you may have. Once again, my name is Richard Hinton, and I'm the manager of Mavericks Validation Hub, and I'm with... Hi, my name is Adele Birkinis. You might know me as the top youth mappers influencer, but... <laughs> Time. I also work uh, at the USAID Geo Center with Terry, um, Brent, and Rory, uh, who are at uh, this conference. Uh, and I'm a geospatial analyst supporting the Youth Matters program. Awesome. And we're dressed very similarly, so if you use your one has hair. <laughs> so, womp, womp, womp. so today we're just going to talk about how uh, Youth Mappers Validation Hub in particular. Um, help youth mappers sort of not only build maps, but also build mappers, and which is obviously very, very important. Um, quick show of hands. If I was to ask you directly to give me a quick 10 second, 20 second elevator pitch on what youth mappers is, who could actually do that? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pick on you. I'm not gonna pick on you, Jenny and somebody. Okay, I know a few of you can. Okay, I just gotta, because there's been a lot of youth mappers presentations today, and everyone sort of touched on the ones I've seen touched on a little bit of what we are, so I didn't know how much background I should give. So I'll just give a little bit of that so it's not, no one gets uh, youth mapper fatigue. Um, so youth mappers is a network of university-based chapters. Um, we're located all around the world. We started with three humble chapters at George Washington University, where I have my day job, West Virginia University and Texas Tech. And then that was in 2014. And then now we have exploded all over the globe in, in the best way possible, not like COVID, but in the best way possible. Now we have 371 universities in our network is in, in 72 different countries. So we do have a lot of people um, in our network and we sort of continue to grow with generous funding from USCID. Um, so we've, when we first set up Youth Mappers, um, we had a sort of a multi-pronged approach of how we want to develop these new sort of geospatial leaders in, in our communities. And I'm gonna focus on, of course, the Youth Mapper Validation Hub, but we weren't the first thing that came out. First thing we were doing, we were building these leadership and research fellowships where we were sort of talking to the community leaders, the, um, the leaders within the actual uh, chapters themselves and sort of building that local capacity. But as the years went on with more funding, we also created other programs. We only have some of them here, we have everywhere she maps. We have a whole Youth Mappers Ambassador Program, which are located all over the world that are helping us develop our sort of mission statement and develop different chapters. Um, and if you saw Rory and um, Brent's talk yesterday, um, they have various initiatives in Malawi and in Tanzania. So we have, this is like just an example of some of the things we do, but we're trying to incorporate uh, youth mappers in the geospatial work wherever we can and so to give them the um, best experience possible and really sort of grow that local capacity. But as I mentioned, um, today's focus is more on the validation hub and what we've been trying to do. So the validation hub, um, I'm very lucky to be working with them and a great, thing for, um, great bunch of students through that. And we came online in 2019. So we got some more funding because validation is a, is a very important part of any sort of data process. And that was sort of a, a missing piece, I'm saying missing piece, but a, a piece we hadn't had an opportunity to develop yet for our own network, okay? So in 2019, we were able to do that um, because with any data source, as you well know, if you wanna use this data, if you wanna keep it current, it means you want to be useful rather, it needs to be current, it needs to be accurate, right? And so in OSM, the way we do that is people contribute, then you need this sort of mature experienced mapper to go through and actually review those edits, make sure they're accurately created, accurately tagged and whatnot. Because if it's accurately accurate data, then we can actually use it. Um, so being youth mappers um, in such a large network as you saw, 72 countries, 371 chapters, as mappers, we're generating, generating a lot of data, right? So that's why we developed the Youth Mappers Validation Hub, because we're here to help make the data better, right? Make the map better so that we can actually give some sort of assurance to the OSM community that yes, we can actually, you know, people can trust these data as best as we can. Are we perfect? Certainly not. Um, but we do have this mechanism in place that as projects are created through our network, we have a mechanism in place where we will then validate those data as we sort of work through. And we're sort of refining that process um, over, you know, over the last few years. The first few years when we were actually set up, we had a backlog of projects to work through. So we're sort of slogging through these old projects. 
And so we've been working diligently with the folks at GeoCenter um, to sort of fine tune this, um, this sort of workflow and really sort of make it make, make it better and, and um, more efficient. So before I hand it over to Adele, a couple of slides on sort of some of the things we've done since we started. Um, we worked on a total number, of, uh, a lot of projects through our chapters. We have 193 different projects. We get youth mappers. At any one time with the validation hub, we have four or five or six students working on this. So since we started in um, 2019, we've had a total, counting the ones working with us today, a total of 33. The unfortunate thing for us is that we train these students to become excellent youth mappers and validators, and then they go and graduate on me. And then I have to find more people, right? So they graduate, they leave, that's awesome. But then I'm left constantly about job security, I guess, because they keep leaving me, so I have to keep training more. I won't leave you. Oh, um, um, maybe I need to get out of here. Uh, so um, through this time, we've had an opportunity to work through um, a lot of different projects. And our mappers, especially with the older projects, sometimes we've had to have our, our validators actually just working, contributing to the actual maps themselves. And then, of course, validating. So that's why we see a lot of tasks that we finished, over a thousand tasks that we've had to finish and then over 8,000 uh, tasks validated across all of various projects. One of the other things that we like to do as part of a role as Youth Mappers Validation Hub is actually train other youth mappers. And in fact, anybody else who wishes to come to our uh, trainings, we will teach you how to use JAWSOM and we'll show you the validation workflow. We didn't invent these tools or these processes, but we wanna make sure our network is aware and has a mechanism and has a place to go to learn this stuff, but it's open to really anybody um that's a that's interested in learning so because i deal with students our trainings are set up on a sort of semester base so in the spring and fall semester and hopefully over summer um, we'll set up some trainings so we've hosted several sort of introduction to jossum trainings and then what we like to do is maybe a month later host a validation training the idea is that once you get introduced to jossum you'll start using that to contribute to osm and get your sort of skills up and chain sets up so then when we do the the Jossum, sorry, the validation training later, you have the skill set to take on this workflow because all the validation work is done using Jossum. And actually, just recently, um, we added a second uh, Jossum training, one called Advanced Jossum. So we did a, just this past spring, we did a intro Jossum training. A month later, we did an advanced Jossum training. The idea again, let's bring those guys to the next one so they can up their skills some more, have another month to work on that, and then we did the validation training. So today, yeah, we've done seven of the intro, one advanced, and then six validation trainings. Um, this QR code, if you like to scan it, will send you to a, or bring you a document that we've put together for JOSM training materials and validation training materials. There's a lot of material out there from missing maps, from HOT, and we've got some stuff as well. So we try to sort of consolidate this stuff into one place because it does seem to be, everyone has a sort of a flavor of it and it's all good material. But I figure we try to consolidate a little bit of this. So if you could, hit on that the QR code, you'll be able to get uh, access to that resource. And we're gonna try and keep that current. Um, one of the things we did do is if you want a, uh, we have two of our documents actually that are in Spanish as well. So it's English and Spanish. So translating some of the stuff in different languages is one of the sort of projects we're taking on uh, to try to reach as large, large an audience as possible. So now I'm gonna step back and let's give it up for the influencer. Yeah, come on. Hi everyone. So as you heard from Richard, the Validation Hub has now been around for a few year years providing awesome data quality support to the Youth Mappers Network. And on the USAID side, Rory Nealon, who's in the back, and I provide a lot of technical support to the Youth Mappers Network. And a lot of that looks like actually creating remote mapping projects for Youth Mappers chapters that request that support from us. So in some cases, students in, at the chapters or regional ambassadors are able to create the projects on the Hot Tasking Manager or Teach OSM. But in many cases, uh, students actually request our support from the Geo Center to create those remote mapping projects. And so we have a Youth Mappers online form that chapters fill out to submit their project creation requests this includes uh, submitting a GIS file for their area of interest, a description of what they wish to map, um, and other related information that then helps us uh, set up 
the projects on the hot tasking manager or teach OSM. And so once we do that, we send a draft of the project to the chapter, they give their stamp of approval, we publish it and the chapter will begin mapping. And Rory and I traditionally would monitor that mapping and uh, provide feedback to the chapter on uh, any data quality issues that we were noticing. And then the final step of that traditional uh, process for a few years what was that the validation hub would assist with uh, the validation of the projects as needed. So in some cases, the chapters were able to conduct the validation on their own. In other cases, the validation hub would support this. But with the project mentor pilot that we started this past fall, we've revamped this process in order to involve the hub students uh, more closely in this whole workflow and give them the experience of engaging with the entire OSM project and data lifecycle as opposed to just with uh, the validation, the final stage of the projects. Uh, so you can see that this diagram is pretty similar, except now uh, after we create the project for the chapter, we assign a student at the hub to serve as the project mentor. And I wanna give a shout out to everyone in the audience who actually participated in this project mentor pilot. So it was really great getting to work with the hub students over the past uh, year or so on this initiative. So the next step is then that the hub mentor monitors the mapping using tools such as OSM CHA, which we just heard about earlier and they share data quality guidance with the chapter uh, as needed in the form of documentation of different errors that they're noticing in the mapping and how to address those errors. Uh, and usually that would involve screenshots of actual examples from the projects. Uh, and this is really helpful for the chapters to receive. And once they get that documentation, they can then adjust the rest of their mapping during the course of the project to uh, address those data quality issues. And then of course the final stage is that the hub still helps with the validation if needed. And one thing to note is that we do get uh, project creation requests from all over the world. So we've been trying to provide uh, data quality documentation in languages other than English when possible. So we've uh, successfully done that for some of the projects that we've involved in this pilot. And I was just looking at our tracker and I think we're at about 13 or 14 projects that are at some stage of this life cycle uh, in the past year. So just to recap some of the benefits of this approach that we've seen in the past year, we do feel that this is, like I said, an opportunity for hub students to really get hands-on experience with the full picture of what it means to be a, a member of the OpenStreetMap community. And additionally, the youth mappers chapters themselves around the world received more received more individualized data quality uh, monitoring and guidance than Rory and I were able to provide by ourselves. And that's a great example of peer to peer learning, which is what the youth mappers network is all about. And then uh, finally, from the USAID side. Rory and I are able to respond to project creation requests more quickly and accommodate uh, more requests over time uh, just because we have that awesome support from the hub. So what's next? Well, uh, we are looking to further involve the hub members in the complete OSM data cycle by creating opportunities for the um, project mentors at the hub to help the chapters on the ground uh, document the end use of the data that they're mapping, uh, which I think will help us build our portfolio of uh, different youth mappers projects that the hub has supported. And we've been inspired by the missing maps template that uh, I think was created in the past year that just kind of creates a really nice infographic that shows, okay, here's the area of interest, here's the purpose of this mapping and here's the impact. Uh, so that may be a direction that will go in the future. And then also uh, we'd like to offer additional data quality support to chapters in more languages. And I also don't have it on the slide, but I did wanna mention that in our new regional ambassador cohort that's getting onboarded, 
quite a few of them are going to be having a technical focus in the support that they provide to the network. So we'll probably link up with them a little bit and just build out this holistic data quality support to the network. And then another um, kind of interesting thing that came up was uh, sometimes we would assign project mentors to different projects and they would be checking on OSM Cha, trying to see who's making edits. And then after a month or two, they would say, well, no one's editing anything. And so we kind of noticed a really big trend of stagnant projects. Uh, and so we kind of were joking that in a lot of cases, the hub mentors ended up just nudging the, the mappers to contribute and didn't actually get that full experience of monitoring the data quality. So that's something we're going to try to develop a more standard approach for. So with that, I just want to say thank you to Richard and the students again. Um, it's been a really great experience working with awesome. you on this. We had a great time working with you as well. Oh, right. great. Okay. Um,